afternoon, everyone. Thanks for spending the noon hour here with us this afternoon. Um, I'm Sarah Holly. I am the director of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health. Um, again, welcome to our third round of engagement sessions around our enhancing environmental health services, but focused today on our Environmental Service Center. Um, on behalf of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health, our Environmental Health Division, and Ramsey County Property Management, Again, welcome to this listening session today. We're happy to have you this afternoon. Um, just some virtual um, session reminders that we are going to be recording this session. Um, we'll post it on our website so that those that are unable to attend this afternoon can view it at a later time. Um, another just friendly reminder that please mute your audio for now. Um, we are going to make note of any questions you have throughout the session. We're going to be using the chat function. We'll certainly allow people to come off mute um, when we get to that part of the session today. Um, but just some um, friendly reminders. Next slide, please. So today you're, you'll hear from a number of people um, here at Ramsey County about, about the Environmental Service Center. Uh, of course, myself, um, also Ray Eden Frank, she is the Interim Division Manager for Environmental Health. You'll also hear from Jennifer McMaster, she's the Director of Planning and Project Management here at the county. Um, Lydia Major, she is a landscape architect with LHB. And then Martin Thompson, um, he's an architect and project manager with LHB. So a great group of people to really um, present um, some exciting visuals and designs to you all today. Um, and so the objectives will take a little bit of time to just kind of um, go over the Enhancing Environmental Health Services Initiative to kind of just center why we're here today. Um, share, the most important part today is to share those proposed Environmental Service Center designs, which is really exciting. And of course, hear from you. Um, and then we'll have an, a gift card drawing um, towards the end of the presentation and before we take questions um, this afternoon. Um, I want to just recognize the incredible team of people that have led this work over the last couple of years, even through COVID. We've gotten through this to this point. So um, big congrats on that. Um, but John Springman, Pete Miller, Nawal Ahmed, Andrea McKinnon, James Homoka, um, who are county staff working on the project. This is a big partnership here at Ramsey County. Um, and throughout this um, process, um, we've had the opportunity to work with LHB, who I mentioned. They are a design firm, um, and we may be deferring to LHB and staff um, to answer questions um, during this session today. Um, again, just a reminder, if you have questions for us, take time to jot those down. Um, there will be time um, during the session um, for you to ask your questions and to make any comments about the designs. Um, next slide, please. So just a few group agreements. If you've been a part of any Ramsey County town halls or listening sessions over the last couple of years, you're probably very familiar with our process around group agreements. Um, and so again, today, please share your thoughts and be open-minded. This is a really exciting project, but we know that we've um, been very respectful of community getting feedback throughout this process. And we wanna make sure that we're listening, listening actively um, when others are speaking, you know, speaking from our own experience instead of generalizing. You know, if you have a question today, please ask it respectfully um, and allow others to be heard. Um, again, because we're in this virtual environment, we encourage you to turn your camera on if you're able, especially when you're speaking. Um, and then, you know, mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Um, you can add questions or comments to the chat if that's certainly more comfortable for you. Um, and we're going to have our team of environmental health staff monitoring the chat throughout this session today. And then again, questions will be answered towards the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. So at um, most of our Ramsey County um, public events, and particularly at our county board meetings each Tuesday, um, we read our land acknowledgement. And this is something that we are very intentional about here at the county. It lifts up um, our community, our American Indian community, and our strong relationship in recognizing the land in which uh, we occupy. And so I'll take a moment to read our land acknowledgement. Every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will and some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life. And some have lived on this land since time immemorial. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We are standing on the ancestral lands of the Dakota people. 
We want to acknowledge the Ojibwe, the Ho-Chunk, and the other nations of people who also called this place home. We pay respects to their elders, past and present. Please take a moment to consider the treaties that made the tribal nations that entitle non-Native people to live and work on traditional Native lands. Consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. All right. So before we launch into kind of revealing the designs of our new environmental service center, we want to take a moment to frame the project and what we're talking about in terms of the Ramsey County goals and priorities. And so the county goals around well-being, prosperity, opportunity, and accountability are important um, in any work that we do, not only here at the county, but in public health. Um, and the project we're talking about today really supports the community well-being priority. Um, the county also has priorities of residents first, which includes effective and efficient and accessible operations. And so you'll hear more about that today. Um, this is another key component of the project um, we're meeting about this afternoon and is supported by the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners. Now I'd like to turn it over to Interim Division Manager Ray Ian Frank. Ray? Thank you, Director Hall. I really appreciate you setting the stage here for us this afternoon. And thank you. It's Exciting to see so many people here. Um, I am going to give a little bit of a background for those of you who've been with us on this journey for, as uh, Sarah said, this is our third round of engagement. Some of this initial information may sound familiar. We presented it before, but then we're going to get into some of the designs and provide some new information as well. So um, this uh, Environmental Service Center is part of a larger project called Enhancing Environmental Health Services which in fact is part of a larger um, policy and strategies that environmental health operates under the solid waste management plan. And um, six or seven years ago, when we were every, every six to seven years, we, we rewrite the solid waste or revise the solid waste management plan. And, and, and six or seven years ago, the current version that we're operating under, we developed two strategies to really look at and evaluate how we were providing household hazardous waste services to residents. We were seeing a stagnation in our services and um, how many people were participating and how many pounds of hazardous waste we were recycling, et cetera. So we, um, the strategy was sort of vague. It was like, we're gonna evaluate how we're providing those services. And um, how we did that was with coming to community, we did some extensive community engagement. We did some analysis. We hired a consultant who did um, some analysis and some investigating into how services were offered throughout the country. And over the past four years, this is where it's really has led us today is um, this environmental service center as this stage and this um, part of the enhancing environmental health services. So we're really um, looking at this redesign system to better address equity and environmental justice, serve more residents, help residents manage a wider variety of materials, be more cost effective and provide greater access to programs for all elements. Next slide, please. So that brings us to the Environmental Service Center. Um, and again, this may sound familiar to some of you who have joined us on this journey so far, but if there are new people here, we wanted to lay the groundwork to share what is an environmental service center. What are we talking about? We're talking about a facility which will collect recyclables, food scraps, and household hazardous waste. And when we're referring to household hazardous waste, that can be items such as cleaning supplies. Paint is a very common um, item that we see brought in used oil, fluorescent bulbs, and electronic waste, which is something that we currently do not collect at our Bay West facility, although we do have a partnership with Repowered in the community to collect electronic waste. This would be able to bring all of those services into one place. We would also have a permanent location for our fix-it clinics. And um, similar to how our services at Bay West, we would continue operating a free product reuse room where a community can come in and and take those items that are still reusable, such as paint and other household cleaners. And also this would be providing space for community engagement or education, well, community engagement, but also community education programs, um, our recycling ambassadors training, um, and also other opportunities for the community to come in for environmental education. Next slide, please. 
So before I turn this over to our partners in property management and uh, LHB, where we're gonna be uh, showing some of the reason, uh, renderings of what this center will look like, I wanted to talk a little bit about where it's located. So up on the screen right now is a map um, and you can see in the red, red is the project area. The street, um, I'm, is this east to west? Yeah, east to, no, yes. I, my directions are, are, uh, are a little bit discombobulated. But um, so Larpender, if you can show whoever doing the marker, that, that that's Larpender. There we go. And then Dale Street is there. So it's it's very near the intersection of Larpender and Dale. It's on the Roseville side of the street. On the other side of the street is St. Paul. Um, we hired a real estate consultant to do a thorough assessment, looking at convenience, cost, environmental impact, space. We got input from residents, and after doing a countywide look at all of the different properties available, we landed back at this property, which actually Ramsey County already owns. So that was an advantage, um, but it also met all of those other requirements that we were looking for. Centrally located along public transit routes. Again, it's county-owned land and no building to tear down. That was um, very uh, a good a good uh, positive uh, outcome of having this site. We really heard from residents that y'all want a more accessible location with a greater array of services. So that would encourage more people to use our services. We've really outgrown our current site, which again is at Bay West. So this new facility will enable us to offer more services in a more welcoming and accessible location. So with the increased use of electronics and batteries, we really anticipate that residents will have a growing need for a place to bring these materials. And this new facility will help us meet this need. Next slide, please. Um, and it, some, I think I'm turning it over to Jennifer. Is that correct? Sorry, my slides got a little bit um, confused, but. Oh, Jennifer... I think, um, sorry, right? I think we can um, uh, have Lydia take over. Is Lydia on with us today? Otherwise, I'm happy to. I'm here and I'm happy to do this. Okay, I was, I know, we did a little bit different arrangement and organization than we did the other night when we were in person. So thanks for stumbling along with us. As mentioned earlier, my name is Lydia Major. I'm a landscape architect. And so I'm gonna walk you through some of the- um, Lydia, before design. you do that, we're getting some feedback on your mic. Maybe your headset. Is that any better? No. Ray, do you hear that also? I'm going to switch to my computer speakers. Is that better? I think that's better. That's better. Thank you, Lydia. Of course. So what you're looking at um, on the screen right now is what we call a site plan. It basically shows you the organization of the site. Along the bottom, we have Larpender Avenue. And off to the left side there, we have Kent Street, which is actually a private road owned by Hennepin County. But it looks and feels like a street. That will be the main way that people access this site. Once they uh, come up on Kent Street, they will have a couple of options to come into the site. The first one there is that's labeled public circulation is a queuing lane that wraps around our stormwater, which is where we will have rainwater infiltration and comes over to the covered drop off, which we'll describe a bit more under the building right there. And then as people exit that area, they will have two options. They can pull off to the left with a truck and trailer or pull into our parking lot for visitor parking. Um, if they wanna go in and visit the reuse room or one of the public spaces, or they can exit back out into Kent and down to Larpender. Somebody who's just coming to visit the building itself would also use that visitor parking lot. So that's another option. And then if they continued north on Kent Street past that drop off lane, they would end up at the north entrance where there is an organics and food scrap um, facility right there. Or they can make the loop around our recycling bins. And these are uh, recycling bins where you're able to drop off on one level down into big bins um, then below them. This route is also how trucks and employees will come around the backside of the site. So um, the trucks will wrap around the back and go down to the loading dock area. Employees would continue south a little ways to the employee parking lot 
right there. So those are the main ways that vehicles circulate. But of course, we're hoping that the site is accessible in other ways as well. And so we have some pedestrian circulation in light blue. So there will be a main sidewalk coming up along Kent. Um, that's an accessible walking route. And somebody can access the building from there or continue on to um, our trail loop as well. There will also be a sidewalk along the other side of Kent that would go up to um, adjacent properties to the north. Right now we are um, also planning on a kind of a climbing path. <laughs> it's got some stairs and um, everything from the southeast corner down there. So if people are familiar with this site, there's sort of a little garden space. And then that would climb the side of the hill and come to the outdoor public space, which is a gathering area that we'll show you more about in a minute. I did want to note that um, this whole hillside has a number of large trees on it. And our intention is to preserve all of the trees on that hill that are in good condition and um, really adding to the ecology of that space right now. We also plan to do a little restoration and, and fix up beneath those trees. There is a row of spruce trees at the top of that hill that is not doing so well. It's kind of diseased and um, they're starting to lose their needles and those trees will be removed as part of this project. We're also planting an additional 75 to 100 trees on the site. So we hope to take what is sort of a um, mostly open space at the top and add quite a few more trees, also adding trees around the edges for buffering. So um, an enhancement overall to the tree functions on the site. I'm going to show you more images in a minute, but there's also large areas of uh, native prairie restoration, uh, the stormwater and outdoor public space there in the sort of kidney shaped area that's also going to have uh, lots of native and pollinator friendly plants. So many changes to the site that we hope will enhance how it works for many um, creatures. Let's go to the next slide. This is an image looking at the front corner of the building. The, the visitor parking lot is what you see there to the left and that outdoor public space that I was talking about is off to the right. Right in front of you in the center, there is a little pollinator garden with some pollinator habitat in there. We plan to use various aspects of this site as um, educational spaces. And so those things kind of help uh, bring attention to those important issues. Also, there will be no traditional turf grass uh, bluegrass, we might call it, on this site, which always takes a lot of uh, fertilizer and water to take care of. Instead, we'll be using low mow uh, grass in some areas and then all of those native plantings that I've been describing as well. Next slide, please. This is a view back over that outdoor public space in the other direction. Here you can get a little glimpse of how it connects to the indoor educational spaces behind those windows. So this is sort of a nice indoor outdoor um, potential event space. And then off to the right, those two barrels are rain barrels. We're, um, the site actually acts as a distribution for those rain barrels for residents. And we're showing here how they can work to collect rainwater off the roof. Further away and harder to see at the corner of the building, we're also showing how a rain chain can lead from a roof into a demonstration rain garden. Again, just trying to show the ways that county residents um, may use their own sites um, in creative ways to support different goals. Next slide, please. And we can't forget that there are indeed four seasons here at um, in Minnesota. So this is a view of the site in the winter. Um, and this is looking across from Kent towards the drop-off area, which Martin is going to describe next. Yes, this is a uh, interior image of the drop-off area. It was alluded to this area will be enclosed and um, lightly conditioned, certainly not room temperature, but more comfortable than being outdoors in all seasons of the year. So we, you'll notice in all the spaces, we've given some uh, thought to make sure there's a lot of natural light, but also managing that so that it's uh, not an issue. Um, Individuals driving uh, to the site to drop off household hazardous waste would pull in here and off to the left, you can see an area where they'll pull off to the side and the items will be collected and then they would pull back out into the drive lane to leave so that it's a smooth flow and safe uh, for all those in the space. There's no uh, need for anyone to cross the uh, vehicle path this way. Next slide, please. 
here we're taking you inside the main part of the building. This is in the public uh, corridor. Off to the left behind what you see uh, kind of a bench and what's uh, suggested of a, a glazed wall. That will be the reuse center where there'll be materials collected that are suitable for redistribution in the community. Um, the county does have a program and this will allow for greater expansion of space to develop that further. Off to the right, you can just barely see it, but there's a window shown off the corridor. Behind that will be education spaces and the Fix-It Clinic, uh, which will be available for public use. Further down beyond where uh, this view is are administrative spaces, restrooms, and that sort of thing. Next slide, please. And here is an image of, of what the education and fixed it clinic spaces will look like. This, it's a large sunny room. It can be subdivided roughly in uh, one third, two thirds to allow for flexibility of use. Uh, it's shown here in its fully open uh, capacity to seat quite a few people. Um, the goal here is to provide a high level of flexibility for all sorts of uses. The room can be set up in a variety of ways. Uh, as needs evolve and, and creative uses are found for the facility. Next slide, please. So here you have a view, oops. Is, is this the fly-through slide, if I might ask? Not yet, Martin. That's Not the yet, next one. okay, that's the next one. Okay, thank you. This is a view uh, roughly if you were to be standing high above the intersection at Kent and Larpenter looking towards the building. So you see the public parking lot in the foreground, the public areas of the building diagonally to the right with the slope roof. Behind that is the what we typically are calling the warehouse space, but really it's where the materials are stored before they're removed from the site, sorted, that sort of thing. And I wanted to highlight that on the roof, you, what you're seeing in blue, those are photovoltaic panels. The project is participating in what's called the Minnesota B3 project. Uh, some of you may be familiar with LEED or other sustainability programs. This is a program the state of Minnesota has that's tailored to our climate and unique community needs. And Ramsey County is participating in that program. So this will be a high performance building with a lot of thought given to energy use, um, quality of the environment exterior as well as interior. And uh, the photovoltaics are part of that. To the left of the, of the portion of the building with the photovoltaics is the drive-through, uh, which we um, showed you the interior of and which also you saw in plan how you loop through that. The road, uh, Kent Street, off to the far left is what you're seeing there. And that continues out to serve further uh, county-owned properties to the north, as well as the Volunteers of America site. Next slide, please. And our design team has generated a, a really fun, what we're calling a flyover, where you get to see, to move through the site and get a sense of what that will be like. So um, if you could start that, please. We start looking just over the public parking towards the main building and it carries us around clockwise. You can see to the left where vehicles that are going to the organics and um, recycling area, how they would access those spots. And now we're heading towards the household hazardous waste uh, drop off area. And this is the outdoor educational area, uh, which will support the building and a view of it at night. Thank you. And I think we can move on to the next slide then. And I'll hand that back. I believe it's to you, Ray. Yes, it's back point. to me. Yes. Thank you, Martin. Thank, Thank you. you for our partners at LHB. It's really been a joy and pleasure working with you all and having us get to this place. So how did we get here? Um, in addition to what you've heard so far and what I shared at the beginning from um, our planning with our solid waste management plan, 
Uh, in 2020, we did an evaluation of our services offered by the county, as I talked about before. And then in 2021, we launched what we're calling now the Enhancing Environmental Health Services. In the fall of 2022, we did a first round of community conversations. We proposed the site locations at that time, um, and we did a round of, um, I believe we did in person and online at that time, as we've done these other times. It's um, My memory is failing me, but I believe we've been doing each, each time we've been doing a combination of both online and in person. Um, then for uh, the past year, fall of 2022 to fall of 2023, so currently now we've been um, involved in the design phase and working with our partners in property management and LHB and McGough um, to really hone in on the design of the building. And in uh, the spring of 2023, we um, came back to community with some of those proposed sites and a building plan and got some more feedback and, and um, had some more conversations with community. And now we're um, in the summer of 2023, coming with more of a, as you saw, the flyover and, and the other um, renderings of the of the building to um, have conversations with you all about. Our uh, next stages include the um, construction phase, which we're anticipating to begin yet this fall. And uh, we have about a two-year timeline for the construction from the fall of 2023 to the fall of 2025. And we're estimating the building to be open in the latter part of 2025. And at that point, we would transition, we would shut down the services at Bay West and everything that's offered at Bay West would be offered at this new facility with the addition of electronic wastes. Next slide, please. So um, as I said, we have conducted uh, two full rounds and then this being our third round, this is the second in the, in the series of our third round. We were out in community last week. Um, we had great attendance, we had great conversations. And um, so we're hoping the same. It looks like our attendance is, we're really well attended here today too. So I'm very pleased about that. Um, so we heard um, that 94% of residents are really looking forward to using a new environmental service center. And 68% of folks said that the new center will encourage them to recycle more. We have heard that residents are excited about one-stop shopping for recycling and disposal services. Residents are excited about community space, having a convenient and accessible location. Some of the concerns that we've heard have been impact to surrounding area, uh, the traffic, the safety and the noise, and um, ensuring accessibility, and also the trees, which um, Lydia uh, talked about in an earlier slide, was a concern that we heard, and, and um, we've uh, been working to address that. So next slide, please. So uh, I think, uh, Lydia articulated this pretty uh, clearly in the previous slide, but we will be, one way that we're addressing concerns, particularly around um, sound and sight and also uh, tree removal, is that we are going to be planting new plantings, which will provide a buffer between the site and the surrounding area. Um, and again, Lydia covered this pretty well with the removal of some of those aging trees and then the intent to plant um, around 75 to 100 new native and adaptive trees. Um, the hill between the site and the nature area will help with buffering as well. We also conducted a traffic assessment and um, through that assessment, we have really been assured that there'll be minimal disruption to the surrounding area. We're anticipating an increase of about 3% of traffic along Larpender in that area, um, but nothing that should affect flow and um, other concerns that we've heard. And I think, next slide, please. Oh, this is on, still me. Uh, more about addressing uh, concerns. So we had um, accessibility has come up as, as a concern. And um, one of the things that we did in the early assessment was to ask residents about how far you would be willing to, and this in case is driving, so drive time. And we heard 15 minutes and this location um, is within 15 minutes of everywhere in the county. And I don't think that we have the slides here when we do our um, session in person, we have a slide that shows a map and then shows the drive time. So that's something that we can share with folks as well, but I don't think is in this particular slide deck. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the site is also like located a, a 
right along Larpenter and Dale, which um, gives access to public transit lines and public walkways. And I think, again, I think Lydia sort of outlined on the map where we're, where we're um, proposing to have some of those walk, those public walkways. So at this time, I am going to turn this back over to Director Holly to talk about the funding source. Thank you so much. Um, so a lot of great information shared today. We'll get to comments and questions. I want to leave enough time to do that. It looks like we were at, sitting at about 53 people joining us today. Um, so the funding source, as we've mentioned in past engagement sessions, the Solid Waste Fund, um, generate, which is generated from the Ramsey County Environmental Charge, which is the charge that you see on your trash collection services bill, um, will be used to build the Environmental Service Center. So there'll be no increase to that, what we call the CEC charge as a result of constructing this facility. Um, the project cost, um, which we received board approval for um, last year, um, is estimated to be around $29 million from start to finish. And so as, as the LHB team mentioned, as Ray has mentioned, um, we have a few next steps. If you wanna go to the next slide um, on this project and, and really have been involved in seeing this through since um, you know the early part of 2020. And so um, again, we wanna continue to engage community um, one way we've done that is our resident survey is still open on ramseycounty.us backslash ESC. So if there are people that could make it here today that you think should know about this project, want to engage, want to give feedback, there's still time to do that. Um, we're having, you know, our conversation today um, virtually. And Ray, you are right that we have had a mix of both in-person and virtual sessions throughout our engagement time starting in 2022. Um, and the feedback, as Ray has mentioned, that we've gathered through these conversations and the survey have informed um, this facility design and we'll continue to do that. So there's still an opportunity to provide feedback. Um, and I think it's great that if people wanna sign up to receive project updates, um, use that link that's listed above on the screen. Um, you, can, you can get updates on progress and just stay, um, kind of close to the action and hopefully also receive the opening day email or update when we get to that point in 2025. So we're anticipating our groundbreaking happening late this year um, or early 2024. Um, and so, but we're we're making really great progress. We have great partnerships. I want to give a shout out to Director Jean Kruger here, who's here on the line. We couldn't do this partnership without property management um, helping lead the way in this space. So a big shout out to um, Director Kruger. Um, I want to move forward now to, as we I mentioned earlier, we're going to have a gift card drawing. And so we're going to go to, we'll, we'll come back to the question slide, um, but I'm going to turn it over to Jordan in the wall. Um, pretty soon you'll see a poll on your screen. Um, and there we go. So if you want to put your name and address, um, if you're a community member, please, you know, joining us here today, put your full name. Um, in your home address. This will not appear back on the screen to everyone. We just want you to know that this information is only collected by our Ramsey County team. Um, and this will help us um, enter your name into the drawing that we'll actually do live here on um, this Zoom call. Jordan and Jordan and Noel, anything I forgot to mention? Uh, nope, I just, so we're gonna we just need to wait a couple minutes for, uh, yeah, some people to submit their answers. All right, so we'll wait a few minutes um, to get that information back. Um, we'll run everyone's name through a name randomizer um, and select a winner here um, during the um, session. Uh, but in the meantime, if you want to think about questions you have, you can either put them in the chat or raise your hand. Um, we'll try to take one question, do the drawing, and then we'll come back to questions and comments. Um, so we'll start that process. So don't be shy. Ask any questions, make comments. Um, we are at that point. All right. Looks like I've not been able to fill name in. All right. Manson, let's see, Jordan, you see those comments. Go ahead, Andrea. Oh, yes, Jordan, want check the comments. There's someone having trouble getting their name into the poll. Uh, but first question up in the chat was, will Bay okay. West be, remain open until the new facility is up and running? And the answer, I can jump in on that one. The answer is yes, that one, it will remain open until the ESC, the Environmental Service Center is open. All right. It looks like people are having an issue with putting their name in the poll. It may be same here. Okay, so let's retry uh, that. 
it might be the browser if you're on the browser, not the application. Oh, okay. So people... I can export the list. The oh yeah, list let's people... Jordan, does it work to do it that way? Yep. Okay. So folks, don't worry about the poll. We have another plan that we're gonna implement for the drawings. So Jordan will jump back in when we're ready to to announce our lucky winners. Mm -hmm. While we're waiting for that, please put questions in the chat or raise your hand and we'll call on you. For sure. If you're a Ramsey County employee, you wouldn't qualify for the drawing, but we do have, I think, a healthy mix of both residents and community partners and um, staff here. Um, go ahead, Andrea, with the question. Next question I'm seeing in the chat. Can the event space be reserved for outside groups? Want me to take that one, Ray? Uh, we're hoping so. That's the plan. That's we're hearing from community that that's what folks would like. So uh, finalizing plans about how that space gets used, but based on what we're hearing, we're leaning yes. Uh, here's one uh, from Melissa from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency says, I've had conversations with county staff about a potential about potential interests of having used building materials and household goods in the reuse center. Is that still being considered? Hey, or do you want to take that for me too? I'll give it a try. We are hearing that request a lot from, from community and we are excited about that idea. Right now, space constraints are making it unlikely in this iteration of the building. We do have potential expansion space and hearing from community is pushing that up in terms of priorities for how we use that ex, uh, expanded space in the future. Exactly, thank you, Andrea, for covering that. Yeah, next question is, will repowered still be a drop-off for electronics? I'm gonna hand that one off to Ray or John. Sure, I can address that and John can add on to that. We uh, currently have a contract with repowered and um, it's likely that they will continue to partner with us, but that will be determined um, at the time when we release, we, we will issue a request for proposals and have um, companies uh, bid on that, on that position. But it's likely, so Repowered, let me, actually, I just want to back up a step. Repowered is a, a business on its own right, independent of the services and the partnership with Ramsey County. So yes, Repowered will continue to do what they've been doing for, I don't know, it's been close to a decade, I think, under they were formerly Tech Dump. So what, what the difference now is that Ramsey County residents are allowed to drop off electronics there for free. So that's the change that may or may not, we, depending on contracts and how that shakes out, that may or may not still be available. But their services, their business model will still be in effect. All right. Feel Jordan. free to put additional questions in the chat or raise your hands. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing any right now, but keep them coming if you have them. Yeah, feel free to raise your hands. And Jordan, let us know when you're ready with the drawing, if that worked out here in the space. Yeah, I think the wall. I, I can't export a list until the meeting's over. So I'm kind of just stuck unless people want to put their name and address in the chat. I'm not really sure what how you want to proceed okay so the poll on zoom was not working is, is that my understanding i think it's, it's probably, probably not working for people that are not on the application and only on their browser jenny kedward has a good suggestion jordan that might work is using a random number generator and just counting down the list does that work I think what we can also do is that when people are in the chat, you can send information specifically to one individual and you can pick one of the speakers, myself or Jordan, to send your information to if you're not able to um, do the poll and then we can put your name on the list as well. Okay, so what I'm hearing are a couple options. You can take the poll, right, that was shown earlier, but a lot of people could not because I think people are on their phones or they're not directly in the Zoom app. Is that my understanding, Jordan? Yep. Okay. So if you if you weren't able to take the poll earlier, what you can do now, whether you're on a mobile device, if you're logged in through the Zoom app, or if you're on Internet Explorer or Google, whatever you so choose to be on today, that platform, you can send your contact information 
to Jordan or Nawal privately. I just want to stress that. So click on the two and send your contact information. And then we'll do a random, we'll do the random drawing and let people know um, afterwards. There'll be two people selected that are not staff, Ramsey County staff or state employees. So our apologies for not being able to do that today. Right, sorry. And Jordan, we remind folks what con what information do you need from them? Is it their name and address? I would also need an email address if um, we're not doing it right now in person to contact them. That's what the address would be for. Um, oh, is because you're going to mail it? Mm -hmm. Well, we also okay. need the home address for tax information as well. Um, but I guess it would be hard to have the email added in there. Okay, so I'm putting that information in the chat. All right, so send again, identify who Jordan and Nawal are in your chat function. In the event that people can't get to the chat function, um, can people send an email to our Ask EH email? That works. I'll put that email in there right now. Sounds good. So what we should do, and Katie and team, maybe what we can do while people are still on the line, let's capture the names or email addresses of people that are on here so that we know who attended and we'll have some way to, you know, cross-check in the event that we don't get information. All right. All right. Let's focus back on the questions, comments. Um, please raise your hand. Come off of mute if that works for you. Um, again, the gift card will be sent. I think it's a physical gift card. Yep. All right, so let's get back to questions. Any questions that you all have? Oh, it looks like people are putting their information going to everyone. All right. Make sure that you're sending this to Jordan or Nawal, all right? Any questions about this design, things you heard today? No, no problem, Lisa. So what are next steps? So if we wanna go back to that slide. So this is our last part of the, actually let's go back all the way to the timeline that Ray was covering before. Um, so again, uh, we're at that blue part, summer 2023, feels like summer's gone very fast. So this is our third community conversation, um, really looking at the proposed building design, um, really important part of the process. Um, we're going to be heading into the construction phase of the project, um, where we're going to break ground um, early this fall, mid-fall, early winter, hopefully, before the that snow falls, um, and then really start that construction process that will take a few years. We're estimating um, the building opening in the fall of 2025. Um, and if we wanna skip forward to the next step slide, um, I mentioned a few things around the survey is still open for people to take. Um, and, and that this is really, we're kind of wrapping up the feedback gathering from community and really looking at this, um, the facility design here. So questions about that, Let me go to the chat. All right, any other questions? Sarah, if I could request when we get to the drawing portion, if the two winners would stay on so we can just verify. We have the oh, most, I'm not, we're not drawing not, today. No, oh, we're no. Not. we're not, okay, <laughs> just kidding, Never mind. That's all right. So um, other questions about the design, the process, how to stay engaged. You can sign up for updates, project updates at that ramseycounty.us backslash ESC, stands for Environmental Service Center. All right. Well, again, if you have questions, we make sure there's no hands up. If you have questions for our team for, for public health, environmental health, and property management or LHB, again, let's put up that 
thank you, the website and the email address, AskEH, which stands for environmental health at RamseyCounty.us. You can certainly reach out to us. We check that email box. We get back to people. There is a really great website where you can get updates. Um, but we just truly appreciate your time. I don't want to uh, waste your time today. I want to give you time back in your day. Um, and so just, you know, on behalf of Ramsey County, um, St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health, um, Ramsey County Property Management, LHB, just the entire community here um, in our agency, we really appreciate your time, your feedback. Um, and we're looking forward to sharing this space with you and you being at the opening day of our Environmental Service Center in 2025. So thanks for coming along on this journey with us over the last few years. Um, even throughout COVID, um, we've made incredible pro um, progress here. Um, and your feedback has really mattered to the development of where we're at right now. So I appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you all um, in a couple of years and probably sooner um, at the opening of our um, Environmental Service Center here in Ramsey County. So take care, reach out to us if you have questions and have a wonderful day. Thank you all.